This is Mr. Herman J. Heydrich, senior partner and founder of the firm of Herman J. Heydrich & Sons, citrus growers and shippers. Plant is situated just outside of Orlando, Florida on Highway 441, one of the most traveled roads in the state. The Heydrich plant is the largest in Florida, and for the past few years, they've packed under one roof more than any other plant in the state. They process in excess of two million boxes of oranges, grapefruit, tangerines, and temple oranges. Sales is headed by Mr. Francis Heydrich on the right. Mr. Paul Heydrich is in the center. His duties are looking after the production on their 2,800 acres of groves and supervising the operation of the vast packing plant. On the left is Mr. Cronenberg, who helps Francis Heydrich with sales. These are lemon seeds. After a long and delicate process and motherly care, they'll be transformed into trees that produce the finest citrus fruit in the world. After the lemon seeds grow into seedlings about eight inches high, they are transplanted into rows and placed about 12 inches apart. Here they'll remain until they reach the budding or grafting stage. A small bud or limb is then taken from a full-grown sweet orange tree and grafted by a highly skilled nurseryman to the tiny lemon tree. Only the small bud is allowed to grow. All other branches from the original seedlings are pruned off. In this manner, it's transformed into a sweet orange tree. A similar process is followed when it's desired to produce some other variety of citrus, such as grapefruit or tangerines. When approximately two years have elapsed, the trees are large enough to be transplanted. Then the preparation of the soil gets underway. The bulldozers then move in and pull up the trees and stumps and palmettos and other scrub trees until nothing but bare land remains. The soil is then plowed numerous times. Only the healthiest and strongest trees are brought from the nursery to be planted. They are wrapped in damp excelsior until planted to protect them from drying out. Here you see the grove caretaker inspecting the trees before turning them over to the planters. The planters round out a pre-dug hole to proper size and depth. The tree is then placed in this hole and then a small amount of dirt is placed around the roots and water is poured into it. Care is taken so that no air pockets are left around the roots, after which the hole is completely filled with dirt. Next, a ring of dirt about five inches in height and 36 inches in diameter is placed around the trees to form a reservoir for holding water. This is filled with water immediately after planting and periodically, as occasions may require, during dry spells. During the growth of the trees, a specially prepared fertilizer is applied to them and weeds are removed, dead limbs pruned off. After a few years, the young trees will blossom and a few oranges will appear. Now, these will be insufficient to warrant harvesting at this time, so they're picked off the trees and thrown on the ground. The trees are watched carefully, fertilized, and sprayed on numerous occasions as may be necessary. When the trees have reached five years of age, the fruit will attain a commercial value and will be harvested normally. During cold snaps, sometimes a special type of grove heater is used. They're placed between the rows and take thousands of gallons of fuel, but do stop the fruit from being frozen. In the summer or winter during dry periods, the citrus trees must be irrigated from the lakes that are so abundant in the Florida citrus region. The water is pumped through large aluminum pipes into the groves, where the pipes branch off into many directions to water several rows of trees at a time. The pipes have small holes drilled in them, and the water sprays out the way your lawn sprinkler does. A great many gallons of water are used since the trees consume vast quantities. In some locations, water is not readily available through the lake system, so 
Large creeks or small rivers are dammed to provide the necessary water, such as you see in this scene. This formerly was a swamp containing huge cypress trees. They were dug out and the dirt removed to attain a present depth of 12 feet of water. It originally looked the same as the wooded area on each end of the reservoir. The orange trees you see around the reservoir are about three years old. Harrowing is done for several reasons. To remove the weeds around the trees, to hold the moisture in the ground, and to plow under the vast quantities of fertilizer that are applied every year. And this is one of the many vital operations in the growing stage of citrus trees. Now we show the important pest control stage. Water is taken from wells in the ground or lakes in 500 gallon tank trucks. Certain chemicals are added and it's pumped into the spraying machines. The spray is used to control several types of diseases that harass the citrus trees. Now these diseases are of no detriment to man. The spray, as you'll see later on in the packing operation, is thoroughly washed from the fruit before it being packed and shipped to you. Sometimes a nutrient type of spray is used. This may contain various elements similar to the vitamins we take ourselves. They are used only when the trees do not respond fast enough when fertilizer is used. After the fruit is mature and tests have been made to show that it contains the necessary ratio between acid and sugar that's required by law, it's ready for harvesting. After the go-ahead has been given from the main office to begin picking, the field boxes arrive at the groves on large semi-trailers, each carrying approximately 500 boxes. After arrival at the grove, the boxes are transferred to a special-made truck, which are called goats or rileys. These trucks haul about 50 boxes at a time and will go through the rows of trees without damaging the trees or knocking off fruit. The boxes are thrown off at intervals near the trees. Now the picking begins. 18 to 36 foot ladders are placed against the trees. And the race is now on to see who's going to pick the most fruit. The men start at the top of the tree and pick their way down, filling their bags half full on the ladder. Then they come down and finish filling their bag on the ground. Then they pour the fruit into the field boxes. Some pickers will pick as many as 100 boxes in one day. After the boxes have been filled, the goats or rileys return. The fruit is then taken out of the grove to the empty semi-trailers where they are loaded. 344 boxes of fruit are put on each trailer. After which the tractor arrives, hooks up to the trailer, cables are placed in the boxes and tightened to secure the boxes to the trailer. Now the fruit is ready for the trip to the plant. Sometimes it must be hauled many miles from the groves to the plant. The hydric firm may have eight or ten picking crews picking fruit at the same time in various locations in Florida. The hydric harvesting operations come under the name of Hydric Harvesting Corporation. It owns 17 of these semi-trailers for hauling fruit to the plant. And the firm uses 311 employees in the caretaking and harvesting division. They utilize over 150 trucks, tractors, rileys, spraying machines, plus two horses.
In the meantime, the hydric plant, situated on 63 acres of land, with the building and parking area nearly a block square, has readied itself to receive the fruit. The three hydrics here are standing in front of their more than 250 employees who are used in the packing operations. They have an extremely efficient office staff which conducts the administration right from the plant. Soon, the loaded truck arrives and enters the plant area, where it drives on a gigantic scales. Here, the fruit is weighed as much as 32,000 pounds on one truck. The scales automatically stamp the correct weight on the driver's receipts, where it's turned over to the receiving department. After the trucks have been weighed, they back up to the unloading platform where the workers are waiting to unload the fruit. Using hand trucks, they unload four boxes at a time. It's then taken to one of the 30 storage rooms where 27,000 boxes of fruit can be stored. It is at this time that the maze of machinery is turned on in the plant to receive and process this fruit. It's then removed from the storage rooms by lift trucks, which carry eight boxes at a time, to the automatic dumping machines. The plant has two of these machines capable of handling 2,000 boxes of fruit in a one-hour period. The fruit is emptied out of the boxes onto a conveyor. The boxes are uprighted and moved along on another conveyor system to the top of the building. They proceed on this conveyor belt out of the building to the box storage building, about 400 feet away. Here, the boxes are again loaded onto the waiting trailers and will return to the groves. After the fruit is dumped, it enters the washing unit where an employee picks out leaves, trash, and damaged fruit. The fruit is first sprayed with water, then a foam detergent is applied automatically. It then enters the scrubbing phase where the machines have huge brushes which thoroughly remove, without injury to the fruit, all dirt, spray, and foreign matter. It's next rinsed with fresh water. All fruit entering the plant goes through the same procedure, whether it be oranges, tangerines, or grapefruit. These are the big drying machines where large blowers force warm air over the fruit to thoroughly dry the skin of the citrus. In some cases, the type of citrus is stamped on the skin in ink with an automatic stamping machine. After leaving the unit, it rapidly moves into the waxing machine, which applies a misty coat of wax. The wax, which contains no chemicals, seals the pores on the skin of the fruit, thus sealing the air out and reducing decay. It also gives the fruit a very attractive, glossy appearance. Now the citrus goes up a long conveyor so that the wax is completely dried before entering the grading table. The fruit continues onto the grading tables where experienced graders cull out the fruit that's been damaged in the harvesting process. Nothing but the best U.S. number one fruit is packed under the Danke label. The lower grades, as you can see, are also thrown onto conveyors. The lower grades travel up to the top of the building where they're stored in huge bins. 
When the bins are full, the fruit is loaded onto open bed trucks, which deliver the fruit to the concentrate plants, where frozen juices and other products are made. Internally, this fruit is as good as the U.S. number one fruit that Mrs. Housewife commands. It just lacked eye appeal. The United States Department of Agriculture, in cooperation with the Florida State Inspection Bureau, keeps a close watch to see that nothing but U.S. number one fruit or better is packed under the famous Danke label. There are four citrus inspectors in the plant at all times. During the processing of the fruit, another important phase of the operation is going on, the putting together of the shipping crates and boxes. The boxes arrive in a knockdown condition and are unloaded and placed on a conveyor which carries them to the mezzanine floor of the plant. Here, both men and women set up the crates, place them on a conveyor, and they have to go have the labels attached. The labels are placed on the boxes with a special type of paste. In another section, the cardboard shipping boxes are put together. Here, a machine is used to staple the containers together. The men and women sometimes put together several thousand crates and boxes a day. During the busy season, as many as 15,000 boxes of citrus are packed and shipped in a day. Now this represents 30 refrigerated carloads. After the crates and boxes are made, they're placed on long chutes where they slide down to the bottom floor where the citrus packers are. You can see the long chutes sloping down to the automatic sizers. When the fruit has been sorted and nothing but the best grade of citrus is left, it travels down another conveyor belt to the automatic sizers. Here, it'll be separated into as many as nine different sizes of grapefruit or oranges. And then it drops into different bins. Never is the fruit intermixed with that of another bin. When the consumer gets the fruit, it's always uniform in size and quality. Here, Marsh brand grapefruit is being packed, one of the many brands packed in the hydric plant. During the packing stage, the USDA is continually checking the quality of the fruit, also testing in the plant's laboratory to be sure the acid, sugar, and juice content is up to or above standard. On the North Sizer unit, the packers are packing oranges continually. Like grapefruit, oranges are packed into crates. They are also packed into different size bags, ranging in 5, 8, 20, and 40 pound sizes. Sometimes 60,000 bags are packed in a day. The hydric plant will pack 5 million bags of oranges this season. After the bags are packed, they are placed on an overhead conveyor system which weaves its way through the plant until they come to the automatic bag tying machine. This device clamps a small metal strap around the strings which close the bag and locks them securely. After leaving the tying unit, some of the bagged fruit may be placed in cardboard containers depending on the method of shipment to be employed. Bags are sometimes placed in cardboard containers for easier handling. 
Great care is exercised to see that bags are always shipped in shallow stacks to avoid bruising and crushing. Other bags will continue on their way and go directly to the waiting transportation. Here the fruit comes down the conveyor system to the refrigerator cars, where it automatically drops off onto another conveyor, which sends the bags directly through the doors in the cars. Now this is where it'll be stacked only so high to avoid damage. While this is taking place, the all-important icing of the refrigerator cars is going on. Here ice is placed into huge ice bunkers located on the ends of the cars. Each car will contain 9,000 pounds of ice and will be re-iced en route when necessary. In some cars, fruit packed in crates is wheeled in by hand trucks. Some will be stamped for our boys overseas and sent to one of the military food distribution areas. But wherever it goes, care is taken to see that the fruit arrives fresh and without damage. On another ramp, lines of trucks are waiting to take on their precious cargoes of liquid gold. Trucks from all over the United States make their way in and out of the plant each year. They may load as many as 6,000 five-pound bags or 400 full boxes of citrus. But not even one orange, grapefruit, or tangerine can move from the state of Florida without the approval of the United States Department of Agriculture. Here you see one of the four inspectors filling out the necessary papers and putting the stamp of approval on them. The USDA office is located with the shipping department offices in the north end of the plant. This is where the necessary forms are approved and given to shipping clerks. Papers are signed to the drivers, and the fruit is now on its way to the consumer. Tremendous quantities of citrus are sent to various ports in Florida for export. Here the fruit may be stored in refrigerated storage rooms until the ship arrives. The fruit is then taken from the cold storage rooms on another conveyor system to the cargo nets. Many boxes of citrus at a time are picked up and lowered into the holds of refrigerated ships. Some ships will hold as many as 92,000 half boxes of fruit. Conveyors are also used to load the ships directly from the storage rooms. Fruit from the Herman J. Heydrich and Sons plant is shipped to many parts of the world, England, Holland, Belgium, Germany, and almost daily to Canada, thus assuring the people of foreign lands an ample supply of health-giving vitamin C. This particular ship's home port is Hamburg, Germany, and it's being loaded at Fort Pierce, Florida. The German flag flies at its stern.
The Hydricks use an airplane to inspect their large citrus operation here in the state and their peach orchards they own in Georgia and South Carolina. Like most private planes, it's also used for pleasure. Here you see Paul and Francis, who are the pilots of the plane. From the rear come Mr. and Mrs. Heydrich and three of their 15 grandchildren. The name Danke stems from a nickname given to Mrs. Heydrich by students at the St. Elizabeth's Parochial School in Philadelphia, which she and Mr. Heydrich attended before they were married. Thus the name Danke was chosen for the millions of packages of fruit and vegetables that are shipped each year from Florida by the Heydrich firm. Also, the peaches from their famous Washington Farms peach orchards in Georgia are Danke brand. Now, this is the largest in the world and comprises 3,500 acres. Peaches from Spartanburg County in South Carolina also move to market under Danke brand. Their largest packing plant is located up in Elba, Genesee County, New York State. Hydricks have brought you this story about the Florida citrus industry to show the various phases of their operation from planting the seed, taking care of the groves, harvesting, processing, packing, and shipping, all of which are necessary to bring you the famous Danke brand Florida citrus.